Hi, I'm Jared Chamberlain with the Chamberlain Group. I want to welcome you to our video blog. Today, we're answering the question and talking about hurdles that millennials may have with homeownership. Stay tuned. If you're under the age of 35, everything you know about owning a home could be wrong, but it's not your fault. Parents of millennial children have taught them what they thought was financially sound when they were the same age. You know, you go to college, you get married, you buy a home and you have kids, the formula for living the dream. The rising costs of college tuition are making it a riskier investment. Young people are marrying later and having fewer kids and the appeal of buying over renting is now less obvious than it was for their parents. Blaming the shift on a changing economy is a little bit of a cop-out, as the trends in millennial homeownership are just as cultural as they are economical. Here are some of the reasons why some of the market's youngest buyers are having an effect on the housing market. First one is millennials love mobility. Economists are calling millennials the job-hopping generation because they are more likely than previous generations to frequently change jobs, even if it requires moving. As unions are in decline and pensions are shrinking and job loyalty is on the fall, because the next job, the next city, is always on the horizon, more millennials are opting for short-term apartment leases, which allow for freedom of mobility. The second thing is millennials love cities. Millennials love the city core, however, are more likely to buy their first home in the suburbs, not in the city core. Urban housing costs are higher and forcing new homeowners outside of the city core. However, renting is still on the rise and is more manageable and gives young people the option to keep living in the city center. So in saying this, there are some hurdles that we need to overcome in order to move from the rental stage of life to the homeowner stage of life. And the biggest one typically is the source of down payment and coming up with enough money to purchase a home. So there are a couple ways that are a bit less conventional uh, that may work for you. If you're wanting further info on these, please email us at info at tcgroup.ca and we'll connect you with the right people to see if these are the right fit for you. So first one is your RRSP home buyer's plan. This essentially will give you the ability, if you've never owned a home, to use your RSPs as part or all of your down payment. You will need to pay all of this back over the next 15 years, but it's a great way to leverage and get into a home of your own. Family funds is the second one. You can have funds given to you as a gift. This will need to have a gift letter to go along with it, but it's a way to use your family's funds as part or all of your down payment. There are some requirements on this, so reach out to us to help see if you are able to do this. The third thing is borrowed down payment. Many bankers and brokers are not aware that there are some government-funded, non-traditional sources of down payment. Both Genworth and CMHC have different types of programs that you can use. Again, there are some pretty strict requirements, so if you want to see if you qualify, reach out to us uh, via email or give us a call. So I want to thank you for watching our video. If you're thinking of buying or selling a home, feel free to reach out to us and give us a call or send an email. If you have found this video helpful in any way, please share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As well, you can find us all over social media at the links in the description of this video. And remember, here at the Chamberlain Group, we have an incredible passion for helping families and revolutionizing the real estate experience.